we are in the longest cave in the Midwest. Come with me. How many have been to Mystery Cave before? Anybody? Nobody has. That's excellent. You don't really like the cave today? Follow me this way. Now this is nature's air conditioner. Please watch your step as you come inside here. Hold the door for the person behind you right this way. This cave was discovered in 1937 by a man named Joe Petty. He's walking along the street bank in February and there was snow on the ground. He noticed that snow had melted in a circular pattern along the bank. He moved a couple rocks, found an opening just big enough to squeeze his body through. He crawled inside and discovered the largest cave in the state of Minnesota, with over 13 miles of cave passage. And ever since that time, there's been tours going on here. You head inside your watch your step as you come in. We'll gather in this open area here. Above us, you can see a large crevice that goes toward the surface. Now today, we're going to go on two side passages plus the main passage of Mystery Cave. There'll be railings like this one throughout the cave you're welcome to use. Oh yeah. These are both sedimentary rocks that formed in a shallow sea environment. So there's a shallow sea covering this part of Minnesota about 450 million years ago. If we have any kids toward the back that want to come up front, they're welcome to. We're looking at a fossil on the wall up here. This is its head right here. It would have had tentacles coming off in this direction. Now think about a modern day squid or an octopus. Are tentacles made of hard or soft material? Soft, that's right. The soft material tends to get eroded away. So we're just seeing the hard shell preserved here in the rock. If you take a look above us up here, We've got some more formations coming down. These are called soda straws. They're hollow tube-like structures. Each one has a droplet of water on the end. These form where you've got water droplets coming into a small depression in the ceiling. That creates a circular ring of calcium carbonate. As more droplets come down the center, these tubes extend in length over time. When people first look at these, they often get to thinking about how they might have formed. People often visualize something like a giant whirlpool of water spinning around, carving these out from the top down, but in fact, that is not how these formed. At one time, this room was actually flooded from the floor by our feet all the way to the top of the ceiling. And the water here was under pressure, it was being pushed upward into every small crack and crevice. And if you look, there's a small crack going all the way along, the length of the ceilings, with that crack was wider at the back of the room and wider directly above us here. And this allowed the water, which was a weak acid, to enlarge the bigger cracks and faster rate than the smaller cracks. The shelf here, that's called shelf stone. That forms where you've got water rich in calcium carbonate traveling over a horizontal surface. You look right at the water surface, you see what looks like little white specks of dust covering the surface. It almost looks like dryer root or something. Okay, now I'll put the lights on here. Wow, that's Turquoise Lake. We are at the deepest point on the tour route right now. We are about 135 feet below the surface. On the back wall, you can see what looks like grapes hanging back there where the red light is. Those are called botryoids. Those all formed underwater at one time. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know why called Mystery Cave? Okay. One of the early cave owners, his name was Clarence Prohaska. And he was working in a smaller cave nearby. He was taking out some flood debris by the entrance with a wheelbarrow. They didn't have walkways like this. They had some gravel on the floor and some wooden boards set up. And he was going across a wooden board with a wheelbarrow. And it tipped over and spilled. It made a great big mess on the floor. And he turned to his coworkers and said, it's a mystery as to why anybody would want to work in a cave all day. And so that became old mystery cave. This became just mystery cave here. After that, the name stuck. So uh, as we head out, just remind you to walk across these mats to clean your shoes once you get back to the visitor center.
just so we don't transport the fungus that causes white nose syndrome from one cave to another. Thank you for joining us for a mystery cave tour today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.